So I think um, it's important as we look around and we see there are empty seats among us, we recall and reflect that there are people who can't be with us, whether it's because of their circumstance like Katie Lee and in, in their journey um, going to an, another place or indeed um, through ill health now. And it's really inspiring then for us to be here as a small group and reflecting and still feeling very empowered and motivated and in spirit being able to come together and do amazing things. And our next speaker is someone who, in the time that I've known her, has done nothing but inspire and motivate um, me personally and has made me uh, really want to be in this space even more so than I ever have. And that's Jo Crotty. And Jo has a remarkable journey of becoming a widow, and I will let her tell her own story, but of becoming a widow with four young children and yet rising above that to care about the welfare of other people and not just in her own backyard or not just nationally, but just with such passion, I think that Jo would go to the moon and shout it if she could. So it's very inspiring. Jo developed the Dangerous on Overhead program and we are very fortunate within Melanoma Patients Australia to be able to assist Jo in uh, providing that program across Australia. To date, Jo has saved lives. We have um, evidence of people coming back and reporting on through Jo's work and our efforts that their life has been saved. And I think that's pretty inspiring for any of us in this room to be able to rub shoulders with someone like that. Um, so I do welcome Jo to come and share her story. I won't um, tell it for her, but thank you for coming up. So cheers. Mrs. Ryan, those words are so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And um, is it afternoon yet? No. Good morning. <laughs> um, I think I've met um, a lot of you that are here today. Um, but uh, for those of you that don't know you, uh, know me, um, my um, oh, my or my journey with melanoma actually started in 2006. Um, when uh, my two young children were playing with their dad one day and found a lump in his right groin area. And I imagine that uh, for a lot of you in the room, that's probably was your first um, signs of, uh, of your own melanoma. Yes, here he is. This was my husband, Rowan Crotty. He was a plasterer carpenter by trade who um, for many years worked in the sun. And the whole time that he worked in the sun, he was never ever protected. Uh, he went for this routine skin check in 1998 where he had a mole removed from the back of his leg, but they said, that's okay, that mole's okay. So they, um, he carried on with life and we got lucky and met each other in 2001. And uh, love at first sight, well, not really, it took a while, <laughs> no. But we, uh, we ended up getting married in... Uh, two getting married in 2003 and then we started popping out our children. <laughs> we had our first in 2004, second in 2005 and yet pregnant in 2006 when we found our lump. Now we had that lump removed and, uh, and they came back with these words we'd never heard and that was, it's a, sorry Rowan, but we've pulled out a malignant melanoma. Now malignant melanoma, I'm not going to ask you what's a malignant melanoma. But in an audience that I'm normally in front of, it's a foreign word to them as well. So in saying that, they got everything and they said, well, look, we got it all and hopefully it won't come back. And uh, we thought, well, yeah, well, it's that kind of uh, cancer. We've cut it out. That's all good. You didn't know anything about it. But we also found out then that there's no cure for melanoma. And that was a bit frightening. But feeling positive, we got it all. They actually had traced that um, melanoma back to the mole he had removed in the back of his leg in 1998, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, so he, um, he carried on with life, we carried it on with life, changed the diet and everything. And then uh, it was uh, New Year's Eve of 2008, we had to go back to our specialist with results of scans that he had. And we learnt another new word and that was, sorry Rowan, your melanoma's metastasized metastasize. Wow. That means it had spread. It had gone into his abdomen, pelvis and his chest. And then uh, they found uh, further studies. They found a tumour on the right side of his brain and his four lower vertebrae was riddled with metastasized melanoma. So unfortunately, I lost my husband at the age of 43 to melanoma. And he left me a widow at the age of 38 with a five, four, two and a one year old. All boys. <laughs> 
The, the, that's sad, uh, and I don't have to tell you that that's sad. But uh, you know, for all that time, I was fighting. I had the, I had my own campaign to save my husband, and I couldn't save my husband. Now, little did I know that um, when he was first diagnosed in 2006, um, he uh, was an organiser with the CFMEU, and he had gone or, or had hatched up with the University of Queensland to promote. Um, a, prevention and awareness and workplace health and safety on the work sites um, uh, in his own industry. And I didn't really know about that until the day after he'd passed and I got a call from this lady from the UQ to say that he'd done that. So after fighting for, to save my husband's life <laughs> and failed, I thought, well, there's one thing that I know I can't fail is to get out there and campaign, campaign and try and save other people's lives and try and get that education out there on the prevention and awareness and early detection of skin cancer. Bit of nostalgia for you. Check this out. 1930s. What do you see? Hats. 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 Right. I had a hat from somewhere. Who said hat? Hat. I'll give you a study tour. <laughs> <laughs> now that's the 1930s. Now. What I, what I want to sort of bring your attention to about this generation that's in front of you, there's a lot of migrants there that have come from uh, in the European countries, uh, from uh, the, um, around uh, the UK, or um, let's, let's just say there's a lot of cultures there that just aren't designed to be in this country. And if you think way back to our settlement days in the 1970s, or not 1770s, <laughs> go back a bit further, Captain Cook landed on this land and what did he find? What was our culture in Australia then? Indigenous. Indigenous, that was you again, wasn't it, Michelle? <laughs> I can't drink enough for two. <laughs> it was an indigenous community. And so my point to that is Australia is close to the equator. It was one of the closest countries to equator. They um, landed on these, on these shores and then our migration began. And we started to bring cultures into this country where their skin just wasn't designed for it. But for some reason, when these cultures did come, they kind of knew that. And look how they covered up. So this is later on down the track. So there's the 1930s. We go to the 1960s. This is at the Brisbane Echo. If you have a look in the crowd, and what I want you to pay attention to is have a look in the crowd. How many heads have got hats on? Yeah? And then we progressed along, went away to the war, come back from the war. Sex, drugs and rock and roll kicked in, you could say, or the hippie era started to come in, and we started to become a little bit more liberated. Now, for some of you, you're going to really recognise this next slide. The old man and the stubbies out there working with no shirt on, yeah? Or think about the woman at the beach. Now, sadly, this is the 1980s, and what we started to recognise as soon as um, from the 60s coming into the um, 80s like this, our statistics of skin cancer rose, and it rose quite high, um, high that we had started to have this higher um, fatality of people um, dying from melanoma. So that was the 1980s. And then in the workplace, they decided, well, geez, there's some people getting run over, so we better put them into high vis. And they did. And they put them into high vis. And they started to sort of cover it up a little bit more. But I'm still going to keep you to community behaviour. This is 2013. Now, the photo that we saw there in 1960s, check the crowd out. You could count on one hand how many hats are in that crowd. And this is our young of today, and this is their, this is their attitude and their behaviour. And here we are at the beaches today. So, has, has the awareness got out there? Has it got out there enough? No, it hasn't. So that's what Danger Sun Overhead's here about. It's, it's here to promote, promote what uh, prevention can do. And we've heard from the doctors here today that have already said that if you prevent and early detect, there is a big chance that you can beat this cancer. Now, for some of us here today, it's, it's probably that's not the, the, the best outcome that we can hope for. But if you, ha if you sort of think about moving forward, if we can prevent and we can early detect the lives that we're saving, the future lives, the future generations. 
So these are the latest statistics from the Cancer Council um, uh, from 2011. Um, does Australia have the highest rate of incidence of melanoma in the world? Yes, it does, but I think you all know that. When we have a look at the colour codes, blue represents men, red represents green, and the, uh, and the green represents combined. So we have the highest statistics in the world. Unfortunately, the men lead the way. Now, it is our highest cancer um, for people aged over the age of 60. But unfortunately, it is the, high, um, the highest diagnosed cancer for those aged between 15 and 44. So it's something to be um, a little bit, um, you know, aware of. Who leads the way in the statistics? It's right here in Queensland. And they say that at the moment, um, melanoma is our fourth most common cancer. It's soon to become our third most common cancer in Australia here. But the statistics in um, Queensland alone is it's our third most common cancer for men already. I think it's making its way to be the second most common cancer in Queensland already for men. So they're pretty alarming figures, aren't they? So what do we do? What do we need to know? Well, part of the prevention is understanding what your ultraviolet alerts are. Has anyone seen this? Uh, Sunshine Coast, we have raised this issue that this has been removed from the Courier Mail's information page. Yeah. And uh, they contacted them and said, you know, what for no space. When we look at that slide, the last slide in 2030, is the awareness out there enough? I think some people just give it up. So it's groups like us that have to sort of get out there and raise that awareness. Thanks, Pat. Well, what you're looking at here is what the UV index is in Australia, and you've got two different seasons there. On your left is a summer season, and on your right is um, actually a spring season. Now, the colour codes there, um, the green is low. Yellow is moderate, orange high, very high red, and extreme is purple. Now, what do you recognise about Australia in summer? It's extreme. It's extreme. Come on, hang on. Where's me? Christ. I love it when people get involved. Here we go. <laughs> Just it. No, no. The occupational hazard on it's a bit more. Uh, it's extreme, but this is why we have the highest statistics in the world. Now, sadly, I'm going to show you the forecast of Townsville today, and uh, the, the extreme, <laughs> the extreme um, uh, the radiation is coming down. It's your UVB rays that, that are your highest um, uh, culprit in, in developing melanomas. Now, um, so that's where you need to start thinking about your sunscreens. But this is from the um, Australian Radiation Protection and Nuclear Safety Agency, or ARPANSA, and what they do with this is they say, okay, we're going to give you a, a, UV, um, a UV alert for the day. So I want you to look at this slide on your left here on the summer day, and I want you to have a little bit of a guess what you think the UV alert would have been for that day. I need, I need some hours for a prize. Who's that extreme? What's you? What's you, Les? <laughs> 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 okay, so we know it's in the purple and we know it's extreme, but when do you think the alert time would have been on that From day? 9 till 3.30. From 9 to 3.30? Do you want a stubby cooler or a water bottle? Both. <laughs> <laughs> From 9.30 to 3.30? From 9 to 3.30. 9 to 3.30? Yeah. Awesome. What's really good about this is, is you're starting to think about it, okay? Think about if you're out and you're washing, you put, uh, putting your clothing up, who's actually felt that, that sun burn your skin at 8 o'clock in the morning? You've all felt it? So when we look at the alert time for that day, in that summer day, the, the alert time in Brisbane was between 7.50 a.m. and 4.10 p.m. Now, if you look at that time... That's when, that's the time that we take our kids to school. That's the time we pick up our kids from school. There are times where if you're on the land and I'm off the land myself, we go out really, really early in the morning so we can beat that sun. But we've only got a couple of hours, yeah, before it starts to pout down. So that's the UV alert time. So you need to be aware of, of you know, when your highest levels are. So, um, so what they do then is um, with the workplaces, um, they can start to 
think about like, okay, well, we're going to start early or we're going to have the lunch break um, at this time or schools will start thinking about, well, we might have their little lunch before so that they're in the classroom in the middle of the day when it's at its extremes. So did you know, and I think you already know this, 1,500 people, uh, Australians, will die annually. Um, yet if detected early, 90% of all melanomas can be successfully treated with surgery. So that's, um, those outcomes are, are far greater at the moment if we think about early detection. What we did is um, early detection is really important in there because we do know about prevention. So through the Skin Cancer College of Australasia, or um, SCAR as, as we know it, um, I would go onto sites with that listing of, remember the doctor had up there that listing at who's at risk? Well, what I did with SCAR and with the Queensland Institute of Medical Research, I asked the question that if we were to put those risk factors into a questionnaire that would actually put you at a risk, so would it be a high, a medium or low risk, it would um, direct people to go and get skin checks. So what we've done is we've um, put together, or I've asked the question and they've done this for me, but we've put this list of questions together so that when I am going onto a workplace, or if I am going into a school or a community club, um, the audience can ask these questions and they can place themselves at a risk of where, the, where they're going to develop skin cancer. So this is actually being launched oh, November, is it Mrs Ryan? Yeah, uh, in November. So um, this is the first time this has ever been done in Australia. So um, we're very um, fortunate that uh, we've been a big part uh, of this role um, and uh, keep, a, keep your eye out on this, on this space. So when we were diagnosed, it was a lonely journey for us because we didn't know about support. We didn't know there was anything like this where I could turn up on an information morning like this. And it was many hours spent on a computer trying to find cures for my husband. It was thinking that we were the only person, people on this planet that were dealing with it, yeah? Because Melanoma Patients Australia would um, form when we were diagnosed, so we didn't know about it. So um, being aware that um, not only through um, uh, prevention awareness and early detection, but if you are detected, there needs to be support. So people um, know where they can turn to for support. And that's what Melanoma Patients Australia is about. We offer information, support, advocacy and awareness for people who have been diagnosed. So if you haven't um, yet become a member today, um, please become a member because uh, th that is one way that we can keep you informed with what's happening in the melanoma community. And we are the only national um, uh, not-for-profit organisation who do offer support to people who have been diagnosed with melanoma. We work in collaboration with all, um, a lot of different organisations, but we are the only organisation that offer that support. We're the only ones that go to government and advocate for you to get um, treatments on the PBS listing. And we can't keep you informed um, if we don't know how to contact you. So if you're not a member, make sure you sign up today. Okay, who's got kids? Who's got grandchildren? <laughs> I'm sure most, uh, most of us in this room um, uh, have children uh, associated with us in some means. But these are my kids. And this photo was taken at 4.30 in the afternoon after the ultravert alert <laughs> in the shade. <laughs> But um, these are my children and, uh, and I want you to look at them like they're your own. They're without their dad now and, and it's a really sad thing that they have to grow up without him. But they're our tomorrow's generation or they're your tomorrow's future. So if anyone's going to lead by example, it's going to be us. So let's lead by example. Let's slip, slop, slap them, but let's also do it ourselves and get out there in the community and show people the correct way to, um, you know, protect ourselves in the sun. Would you agree? Yep. Okay. So just to finish off my little time here up on stage, what do you think your alert time is today? Have a go. I reckon eight till five. Eight till five? Hmm. Close. This was from yesterday in Townsville, but it's not much different today. But between 8.40 a.m. and 3.40 p.m., you need to protect yourself. Um, we have to uh, lather up in sunscreen and get our hats on. So we've got the sunscreen provided. Hopefully you got your hat. Well done, Pat P. Hang on. <laughs> Put your water bottle in.
So don't just run over here. It is a program that goes out into the workplace. It educates. It goes into a little bit more detail than what I've shown you here today. It addresses the workplace health and safety. But please leave here today. Um, join us with um, Melanoma Patients Australia. Let us keep you informed and um, stay safe and good luck. So I think um, you now know why I admire Jo. Uh, I have never seen someone smile so much through such a presentation, but Jo shows us that through love, friendship and support, we can come out and, and make great changes and um, make a difference. And I think that the um, image of your young children is um, a beautiful way to remind us of why we're all here and what we're doing.